that may be hard to accept or digest for some of us because we truly feel like we're doing all we can. But if we be honest with ourselves, even when we feel like we've done all, there's still room. And I say that not to discourage you, but to encourage you. Why? Because we have to continue to press. We have to remember that we are not our own. You don't belong to you. Every one of us in here were bought with a price. A price too high for any one man to pay. This is why we must look beyond the shadow of a doubt. That our God is God. That Jesus is our Savior. Because who else could have endured and bared our sins? Who else could have taken on our transgressions? And who else could have defeated death, hell, and the grave? So when we begin to see these simple words that I'm yours, Lord, we gotta begin to understand it's all because of Jesus that we're even able to do anything. Your abilities, your skill, or some of us think we're smart, your intellect, you didn't get it by yourself. It was because of God's divine design for your life. So don't fool yourself and get into all that because I'm telling you, without God, you're nothing. Enter into worship with us. Wherever you are, I don't care if you see this standing, whatever. Just take your heart and your mind and just begin to focus on God. Focus on Jesus. Oh my God. The Passover lamb. The lamb that was slain. Uh, the lamb that shed his blood to take away the sins of the world. Nobody but Jesus. How can we not want to give him our favorite best? God gave us his best. Your heart and say, I'm yours. Never think I have you. My house, my car, my children, my family. It's all for your glory. I'm yours. I'm yours. that it takes value, that it takes precedence, that it has weight. Let me ask you something real quick. When is the last time your worship carried weight? Somebody try to understand what I'm talking about. The Bible declares that when we begin to go into worship, that the worship of the saints, the real saints, will cause the glory of God to show up. The Bible also records that glory carries a specific weight. It refers to the weight of glory. Do you understand that when you begin to praise God and when you begin to worship Him, the Bible records one particular incident in the Old Testament. It says that when they, they got to the east end of the altar and it says that the trumpeters and, and, and all the musicians began to make a joyful noise and one sound being heard up to heaven and it said that the glory cloud began to fill the place in such a way that even the priests were not able to minister. See, that's what happens when your worship reaches a certain place. It begins to bring in and invoke the very presence of God in such a way that you don't see anybody else because the glory of God begins to show up. You can worship in such a way that the way of glory will show up in your life, in your home, 
on your job. You don't mean you gotta go over the corner and go over the post for 35 minutes. No, it means that you have to have a sincere heart and you have to know how to tap in and worship God from the depth of your soul. You don't even have to always do something that you say out loud that you mean in your heart. When you look at heaven and you make that connection, the way of glory will show up. But a simple thing, like what we're saying right now, I'm yours, Lord. That means no matter what is happening to me external, on the outside, no matter what attack I may be feeling or experiencing at the very moment, it does not supersede your plan or your glory for my life. How many of you understand that today? So for just one more time, as you just say, I'm yours, Lord, I want you to understand what you're really saying is, God, I submit myself to your plan. I trust what you're doing for me, what you're doing to me, what you're doing in me, and then what you're going to do through me. See, we got to understand, a lot of us, we won't say, oh, God, just use me, use me. But see, here's the thing is, God can't use you until you first yield me. God is not trying to send you out like a renegade. As we would say, it, as old cliches would say, as a proverbial bull in a china shop. You know what would happen if you turn a bull loose in a china shop? He would what? He break up and damage everything. Some of us are like that because we we think that we're ready, but God says you're not yet humbled and submitted. I say I'm not trying to throw your ways, but I'm trying to cultivate what I put in you. How many of God places things in us? From the time of our conception and our birth, God has a divine plan for our lives. But so often, we make choices that try to be real. But the thing I love about God is that even when we are in the place where we think we've messed up and gone too far, that we're unredeemable, you know, I laugh because I preached this one time, you know, the world thinks they create a recycling, but you know, that's really God's plan. When Adam fell, he already put a recycling plan in place so that he could bring man and change him back into what he admitted he did him to be and what he, he wanted him to be from the beginning. I love the way God does things because he'll take what the world discards and say it's useless and that it's worthless and it has no value. He'll take what has been damaged, broken, and destroyed and left as refuse and left as nothing and he'll take it and he'll mend it and, and bring it back together in such a way where the very thing that seemed to be worth nothing is now priceless. Can you do me a favor? Will you just tell two or three people around you and tell them you need to know you're priceless. You're priceless because you're your work of art. You're God's human work. You just work for shit. Don't let anybody diminish your value. Don't let anybody...